What is up my thrifty friends? Tabs here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Today's video, we are doing a work with me. If you're new, this is the logo. This is the video where I keep you up to date on everything going on in the reseller world and you get work done. Get those tasks ready, listing, cross-listing, shipping, whatever you got to do, and I'm gonna keep you company because I'm your coworker. We're just working together, hanging out, chitty chatting. If you are new to my channel, I'm a Canadian reseller. I'm a mom to two girls, a wife. I work part-time in a hospital pharmacy and I like to sell used clothing. It is my jam here on YouTube and I share everything about my business helping you build a side hustle reselling clothing as well. All right, we have so many topics to discuss. I'm so excited. I love it when there's like lots of really good things to chat about, different platforms. Some viewers reached out to me. I have some questions, comments, things like that that we're gonna share. And I think we're gonna do the designer pronunciation at the end again. I got three new ones. This is just too much fun. Can't believe how much I butcher these names, but I'm sure others do. Like, I, I can't be the only one that doesn't know how to say designer names. Let's jump into this. Uh, life and business updates. So I am recording this on Friday because we are leaving today and I am going to be gone until next Sunday, pretty much. So I'm going to be gone for about nine days. So I batched all my videos. I've been a busy bumblebee this week, uh, getting everything done. We are going out to the mountains for uh, a, a snowboarding competition. There's a bank slalom and Emika and Jeff both entered. It's a fundraiser. It's just for fun. They have all different age categories and they did it last year. They had a blast. So we're going to head up for that. And then we're going to come back home Sunday night. I'm going to repack and I'm headed out east to Winnipeg on uh, Monday morning. So I'm going to go spend the week with my mom and uh, her husband and go visit my brother and stuff. I'm very excited about that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Like it's just been a busy week, but nothing that wasn't manageable. I did work two days as well this week. I think I, I don't even remember what day. I, I worked yesterday and maybe Tuesday, I can't even remember. It's just been a blur this week, it's been a busy week. Uh, Business-wise, things have been good up until like Wednesday. And Wednesday, I don't know what happened. Things just started to kind of drop off. Honestly, the last three days have been really quiet, like one sale a day. Actually, I had my first no sale day on Poshmark since like January 10th yesterday I didn't make a sale so I I haven't had one of those in a long time I was actually going to start a board like you know how workplaces are like there hasn't been a workplace incident in x amount of days I was going to say I haven't had a no sales day for x amount of days and I was going to get a little uh side that I could put the numbers on or whatever but yeah no other than that um I'm not stressing about it uh, what I have learned over the last few years that I've been reselling is that sales ebb and flow sometimes you're gonna be making mad money and sales are happening and you're just so pumped and then it'll come with a week of slowness sometimes a week or two of slowness sometimes a whole month of slowness and I don't let it mentally affect me anymore like when I first started I was riding the emotional roller coaster of the sales and I'm not they did roll out an update two days ago on Poshmark uh, I think all Poshmark because it was that live show update which we're going to talk about later sometimes when they roll out updates I notice weird things in sales and algorithms so yeah I'm not stressing about it and I have enough on my plate next week so yeah sales are going to be what they're going to be I'm walking away Jeff will do my shipping and it is now tab time after recording this video it is tab time and I'm ready for it so yeah business is okay and uh personal life yeah busy okay lots going on but you guys are here for the topics we got lots to chat about so we're just going to jump into the first one this actually blew my mind when I saw the news heading and I'm sure many of you guys have seen this now because it came out like two days ago the top story the funniest story the best story that I read this week um is the Timu Shein lawsuit I guess so Shein is suing Timu 
for, or maybe it's Temu, it's T-E-M-U, I don't know how to pronounce it, for impersonating Shein brands and tricking customers into believing that Timu is associated with Shein. I don't know, there's like a whole thing. I just think it's so funny because this is like the pot calling the kettle black. Shein is mad that Timu is impersonating them, yet Shein has impersonated so many designers ripped off designs from like small small designers big designers expensive designers everyone Shein has literally plagiarized probably 90 percent of their website off of other people's designs and yet they are going after another company for copying them i'm sure everyone that read this article just let let out a laugh when they first read it because it's hilarious it's so ironic i just yeah, that made my day. If any news story made my week, it was this one. And I was like, take that, Shein. <laughs> I mean, both. I don't like either of the companies, but yeah, that was a funny one. That that made my day. Uh, next, other story that I thought was kind of shocking. Uh, one of the bigger stories that I read was that Indonesia is banning import of secondhand shoes now. I guess they are tightening the customs at small checkpoints in around Indonesia because in 2015, they banned the import of secondhand clothing and shoes over concerns of hygiene as well as to protect their local textile industry. I find this very crazy, but when you read a little bit more into it, uh, I didn't realize, but Indonesia is one of the areas where we send our unused textiles. Like when, you know, items go to the thrift store, only like, I've heard only like 15 or 20% are actually sellable and the rest of them get bundled up and they go into waste. They go into um, dumps. What do you call, what are they? Ah, there's a term for it. I can't remember. They get shipped overseas. It's just, it's crazy. So yeah, they've definitely tried to crack down on it. I know there are certain cities in Indonesia where it is absolutely illegal to sell secondhand clothing, but I also read that they're having troubles with like online selling. So people that create like an Instagram page or they're selling secondhand clothing online, they were having troubles policing that. There's a lot of details in it actually that I wasn't aware of and this has been going on for a while. I think it just hit the news because they're cracking down on it more. This was implemented, you know, eight years ago. Yeah, obviously they're having struggles. And uh, I just want to take this back. I think there needs to be penalties to companies that overproduce. If they're overproducing, it should be their responsibility to reuse that textile. Like, I don't know why the you know the big manufacturers why their problems become everyone else's problems i think it needs to go back to them i mean this is going to go back into politics and we're just not touching on that in this on this channel we don't discuss politics here but there's some stuff going on we all know it next topic denise made a great comment on last week's video about skipping the shipping discount did you know that you have to turn off the automatic bundle offer in your closet if you're using the My Shoppers feature to create bundles and send offers. If you don't, it will combine the bundle offer set in your closet plus the offer you are sending out to shoppers. And I actually have mine shut off. I don't talk about this often, but I knew this. I just don't talk about it. I was so happy she brought it up because I have had that happen where I ran an aggressive sale and I already had, you know, bundle and save 20% and people got some crazy deals. So because I use my shoppers at least once a week, I don't even have the automatic bundle on in my closet anymore, just so that I don't forget it and accidentally give someone like 60 or 70% off. <laughs> As well, did you know that if you use ad likes to bundle and the send bundle offers in my shoppers, you don't have to send a shipping discount. And that is a cool little hack. So even though they are a single item when you use that my shopper it will add even a single item into a bundle and when you send out the discount in the my shoppers feature for the bundle shipping you don't have to do a shipping discount so typically i personally do but if i'm running a sale and i'm doing 40 or 50 percent off i will not it is going to be whatever the shipping rate is you're saving 40 or 50 percent i mean that's up to each person 
I thought this was a really great thing to bring up because some people may not know that and uh, it is an easy way to get around. And sometimes I like sending offers on items in a bundle if it's something that I don't want to give a shipping discount. And I don't have any set rules, like nothing that stands out, but I know I've done it a couple times where I was like, even just giving them a 30% discount, I was like, I'm not giving them a shipping discount on this. Maybe it was expensive items or like a Patagonia jacket. I can't remember but I know I've used it before. Thank you, Denise, for bringing that up. Uh, very good information for anyone else that wasn't aware. I have another conversation that was had between Carianna and myself. So Carianna is from Styles KA Boutique and she has a Poshmark closet. She reached out to me recently about a bundle. She had a very large bundle, like a bundle listing that she made from combining sales from two to three shows. So she had held a we'll say a couple shows over two days and a person had purchased from each show. So what she did was created one listing and put all the items in there and then they can buy just that one listing instead of doing multiple bundles from each show and paying the shipping times three times. Uh, her issue is that the bundle was over $700 and as we all know, when an item costs more or a listing is over a certain value it's going to be sent to Poshmark headquarters to be authenticated if you didn't know that this is definitely good information and uh, yeah this was just more as an FYI so she reached out said that she had to split the bundle for the buyer so that it wouldn't go to Poshmark headquarters and the reason being is that it wasn't they weren't a bunch of individual sales you know, creating a bundle that they pay for, she actually combined all the items into a single listing and had it listed. Yeah, just keep keep in mind that if you're bundling items from multiple shows and creating um, specific listings for people that you're watching that dollar value and that you don't want it to go to Poshmark headquarters because the buyer will be waiting a couple weeks then. One more question. Recently, Jader commented, how do you check STR, so your sell-through rate, on Poshmark? And I thought this was a really good question because I talk about this and I'm always like, it's kind of gray and it's kind of hard to explain, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to explain it here. So it's not accurate. It's not accurate at all. It's like, a best estimated guess. That's what I'm doing when I try to calculate sell-through rate. If you have a better way, please share down below. Obviously, if you're using eBay, that's really easy to look it up for, but on Poshmark, this is how I do it. Usually, I'll look at how many are available. You may want to filter by color and size if you're doing it that way, and then pay attention to the quality of the listings. Um, oh, here comes Callie. And she's like, what the heck? Callie's deaf, just so you guys know, like she is, she is 95, I'm going to say 98% deaf, so she can't hear when I talk to her. So I talk to her still like I always used to, but she can't really hear. Okay, out she go. And uh, I think because she's so deaf, she can't hear where I am and she knows that I'm in the house, but she can't hear where I am in the house. So she'll literally go room to room checking to see where I am when the door shuts, she'll just scratch. And if I'm here, she just wants to know that I'm in here. This is where I am. And then she'll just go lay outside of my office. So yeah, um, back to the Celsius rate. So yeah, I will pay attention to the quality of the listings as well. What kind of photos they have, if they don't have measurements, uh, if they don't have info, if they look like they're just a casual seller. Then I will also go to solds. I'll click through and see when the last time the listing was active. Are they recent solds? Usually if you click on it, it'll tell you the last time this was active. If it was like six months or a year ago, I know that there's probably not many of those items selling. Now, this isn't the most accurate way because sometimes if people don't filter out their solds when they do bulk share on the Poshmark app, it will also share their solds, which will put activity on it and skew that. It's just complicated. So this is just my best estimate way. Um, how many are available? How many does it look like were sold, you know, in the last month or two? And then try and get it from there. Another thing that I try and focus on, maybe not necessarily on how many are, are sold, how many are available, but what do the other listings look like? Look like if I look and they're all like, you know, thrown on a carpet or they're all wrinkled or they don't really have much information on them. 
I will do my best to have the best listing. Like I will create the best listing. And that's just my practice always when I create listings. I always say if my listing is beside another reseller's, I want mine to be the best. If there's two options, they're priced the same, exact same item, what is going to set your item apart? So even though sell-through rate is important, if you're competing against others, you need to make sure that your listing is the best listing. And I think this would be just like clear, well-lit photos, including all tags. Make sure you take pictures of like material content, anything they need to know. Adequate info on the item, including measurements. I think measurements are a really big thing for a lot of buyers. Do people sell items without measurements? 100%. But if my item is compared against yours and I have measurements and you don't, there's probably a better chance that they're going to buy my item. And that's just being being real here. Uh, I do try to create no doubt when someone buys from me that they know what they're getting, that there's no guessing. It's clear the item, the quality, any flaws, any information. And yeah, I hope that helps. I mean, research just sucks on Poshmark. It's not ideal. Uh, I wish there, to be honest, if if you could not share your item once it was sold i think it would make it a lot easier because then you could just look at solds and you would know click on them find out the day that they sold and it would just be a bit more straightforward but i don't see that happening it's not on their radar not their focus yeah that's the best i think the other thing you could do is just do your comp searching on ebay right you can see how many items are available and then you can see how many have sold in the last 90 days and that is very easy to calculate quickly all right. Uh, last week, I caught the Reseller Hangout podcast titled, How Do I Make My eBay Business Successful? Uh, they had some great tips that were not only eBay focused, but really any reseller could take notes from. I especially like the part about know your hourly wage. And I've touched on this one before. I felt like it could be discussed again. They talk about grabbing an item for $2 that you think you can sell for 20 and is it worth it? Thinking about like sourcing time, listing time, shipping, answering questions, things like that. It was just some really good info. So if you want some just quick knowledge, I think it's like a 15 minute podcast. I'm gonna drop the link down below. They are the Reseller Hangout podcast. Really enjoy their content. They always have tons of nuggets of information and uh, some good topic about knowing your hourly wage. And I encourage everyone to. So if you don't calculate this on a monthly basis or even a weekly basis, I would do it after you do your taxes, right? After what is the amount that you're claiming to the government, right? After you've paid all your fees, all everything, what is, your, what is the amount that you're gonna pay income tax on? take that and divide it by the amount of hours that you spend on your business. You know, I, I first off break it down into weekly. I have generally the same amount of hours every week times that by a month. Well, you know what I mean? Figure out the math, but calculate your hourly wage and figure it out because I think it will help you make decisions and reflect on what you could potentially pay yourself, right? So I don't know necessarily pay myself. And I know this has been a question before, but I do know what the value is of my time. And uh, I consider my time to be pretty valuable, definitely. But Good Food for Thought, check out their podcast. I think it would bring some value to you and your business. Uh, next up is just more of another general topic. I watched one of the realist videos describing live selling the other day. And if you don't follow her, you should. It's Ashley Wheeler of eight. Um, she is absolutely my home girl. We have been friends for a couple years. We both kind of came on YouTube, like into reselling YouTube around the same time and were involved with Becky Parks YouTube course. So we were able to meet through there and just have continued on being friends after that. Also, fun fact, both of our husbands are named Jeff. Uh, she shares a very real journey over the last year with live selling and shows between Whatnot and Poshmark. And the one part I really resonated with was the hustle culture chat. And uh, I think we were talking about it for a while in the reseller community, and then it's kind of fallen off again. And uh, I mean, I really resonated with her entire video. Ashley, you know that, like that video hit home. I reached out to her as soon as I finished watching it and we had a really good conversation. I think live selling has really brought back 
the hustle culture. And uh, she talks about how you can easily get caught in the work hard rut surrounding live selling. Um, it's just, it's a day-to-day -day thinking model where you're sourcing, you're selling, you're pushing a lot of inventory. It's very quick returns. That's the biggest perk, right? You invest money in this inventory, you get that money back and you make money on it very quickly. But I think what people look over is the amount of work that it takes to run a volume live selling show. It takes a lot of work. And she wasn't even outsourcing all these items. She had sourcing, like she had pallets and things like that showing up at her doorstep. And it was still incredibly difficult to keep up to that pace. Now, this does, like I said, it does pertain more to people doing volume selling, uh, multiple shows a day, multiple shows a week. I 100% believe it is the quickest route to burnout and can rob you of your life. Um, she talks about this. Reselling is a challenge to begin with. It's hard to shut off our brains as a reseller, but add in sourcing, prepping, shipping, and dealing with requests while selling over 25 to 100 items a day. Uh, you'll find yourself head deep in the hustle culture. And that's, that's very real. Work her harder, find more, sell more. If you find yourself falling into this and feeling burnt out, there is other ways to sell that you don't have to do live selling to be successful. I think we've all thought, you know, as live selling came out, that this is the new norm. This is where lives, this is where like reselling is going. If you're not doing live sales, you're not going to be successful anymore. That the algorithms prefer us to be doing live sales that they're favoring. And I, I just don't know. I just don't think it's true anymore. I don't. I don't do live selling. My business is still going, right? Um, I think it's really important that we set time aside for friends and family, that we have set work hours in a day and that those are the hours we are working. And again, going into your hourly wage, right? So she does break down some very real numbers. She made some great money last year, but she lost a lot of extra time because of the time that it took. So when I bet you if she calculated her hourly wage last year, she, even though she made a lot of money, she was actually working twice as hard and twice as many hours to be able to make that money. So yeah, it's it's kind of figuring it all out. But if you haven't watched the video, I'm going to drop a link for that one below. And I really recommend it, especially if you are live selling and there might be some things that you can relate to. It's just a very, very relatable video. Ashley, you know I love you. Thank you for being so raw and real and honest and just sharing everything over the last year. Okay, let's go into Macari and then we'll go to Poshmark. So for Macari, Macari updated fees. Um, there was a message sent out. We wanted to let you know that we've updated our terms of service. We've made these changes due to an in increase in fees from our processing partner. As always, we strive to keep our fees as affordable as possible for our community. Here's what you need to know. Effective April 17th, 2023, the calculation for the payment processing fee that is charged to sellers will change from 2.9% of the item sold plus 50 cents per completed transaction to 2.9% of the combined item sold and shipping price plus 50 cents for completed transactions. So what I'm thinking is it's kind of turning into the eBay model where it's final value. It's the cost of the item plus the shipping and that's what you're paying your um, your commission on. I And I think they changed the wording as well. They're no longer calling it a processing fee. It was like a transaction fee. I can't remember. It was something. They changed the wording in it as well. Um, also effective May 1st, 2023, the instant pay processing fee will increase from $2 to $3 per instant pay transaction. And the transaction limit will increase from $500 to $600 per month. The rate is displayed when you initiate the transfer. Use payment processing fee and instant pay on the Macari app to get paid in minutes. Interesting. I am not a Macari seller. We actually cannot sell on Macari here in Canada. I would love to hear your thoughts and what you think about this. Uh, I don't know if it's going to add up to too much. I guess on if you have like bigger, bulkier items, maybe. Uh, typically, I feel like shipping in the States is pretty affordable. So 2.9% on, you know, maybe $9 or whatever. So you would actually, yeah, you would pay still another two to three bucks in processing fees. If you have cheaper shipping options, I mean, it's, yeah, 
regardless, it's still extra money that they're taking. And uh, I think this breaks down to interact. Like, didn't didn't Visa and debits and like all those things, they had some sort of transaction thing. So before they used to, the the company or the business, they had to pay that transaction fee. But somehow there was like law passed in the last year where they can pass on that transaction fee from Interact to the customers. I think we're going to start seeing this play out in more ways and more companies too. But yeah, I would love to hear what you guys think about that and I will drop a link down below. All right, let's talk about Poshmark because that's what you guys are all here for. I mean, that's my favorite thing to talk about, to be honest. But um, Poshmark had a new update. It's come out. They put a slide bid button. I cannot make this stuff up. We literally just talked about this a week or two ago and uh, they're starting to make some proactive changes on the app. So I'm excited for that. I think that's great. Not going to lie. Like I said, kind of curious if they watch my videos. Hey, Poshmark, if you're listening. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good change. I think it's going to eliminate accidental buys, which is also ruining the experience for some buyers that are just on there checking it out. It's also going to improve the experience for sellers because they're not dealing with the, hey, I accidentally bid, can you cancel my sale? That's no longer a valid excuse anymore. And I'm not saying excuse because it was happening. I couldn't believe how many people commented that they accidentally bid on something or bought something that they didn't mean to. So it, it very much was a problem happy they fixed that check that off the list of things that they need to work on the other there were two other areas that they made improvements this did roll out on march 15th uh, the other two things are first is hosts can clear the chat to give even more control and ensure they feel supported you now have the ability to clear the chat during your show. I think this is great, especially if you have a few trolls pop up in your show or someone has made a few rude comments. Um, P.S. If you don't want certain people in your show, though, like if this is an issue, uh, you can just block them. When you block people on Poshmark, they actually can't come into your show. They have no access. So that's another way that you can block these types of things. But I am going to put the link to the blog post down below if you want to read about them. I did do a silent show today and I couldn't figure out how to uh, erase comments. So I'm going to have to watch in the blog post they have like a how-to, how to do it. And I'm going to have to check that out because I was trying to figure it out on my own and I could not figure it out. And then the next option, which I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm not sure how I feel about this. So the next is shoppers can discover popular shows. Shoppers can easily discover shows that have the highest number of viewers on all Posh Shows page. Be sure to share your show with the community to drive more viewers. Not sure how I feel about this. I already feel like live selling is a little bit of a popularity contest, not going to lie. And it's not necessarily people with the best items all the time. It's the people that put on the best show, right? Um, I've, I've done the same thing. I've fallen into people's shows that I'm like, man, they're just so entertaining, right? Um, so I don't know what I think about this. I see this turning um, shows into a popularity contest. I mean, it's a business, it's views. I see where they're going with it. But people that are already getting lots of viewers in their shows, their show naturally stands out. Like when you're looking, you can see how many viewers in the show page. Also, people that have bigger audiences probably don't need special marketing to grow their audience because they're already really good at that. I think what this is going to do is make it actually harder for smaller sellers or people that don't have larger audiences. It's kind of like handing out a golden ticket to people that are already winning and found success. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I think they, I see the rationale. I know they're about their bottom line and more people in that show probably equals more sales, more bidding, things like that. But I just think it, yeah, it gives an upper hand to people and uh, they always tell us they're, you know, they want it to be a, a even playing field. They don't want automation because that doesn't equal an even playing field. But then they do something like this and that doesn't make it an even playing field. That is favoring people that have a lot of viewers in their shows. And I just don't know how I feel about this one. So we'll see how it plays out. 
like I said, there's so many things that they could be addressing. I just don't know how these are the ones that that need to, you know, that are that are the most. I I just don't see how these are the ones that that they came up with. Again, I don't sit in their headquarter meetings or their business calls, but I got some ideas that uh, would probably help with the app. And uh, I'm sure all you do. I know tons of you guys send in emails to them sharing your thoughts or or ideas. And uh, I don't know, there has to be a better way to do this stuff. Anyways, kind of anticlimactic with that one. I'm so sorry, guys. I just wasn't, I don't know. It's just not something I was excited about. Uh, Posh, if you're watching, here is the most requested update for live shows, okay? Get out a pen and paper. I'm going to tell you this will this will change the user experience. Payment verification. That's what we want. Payment verification. Um, notification during live shows that payment has failed. This would help people trouble, troubleshoot in the show. This would help us let them know, hey, there is an issue with payment. Can you check out your card, please? And if not, you could rerun the item and not lose sale because people are losing multiple sales in a show because payments are not verified. That's a that's a sore spot. And I know Whatnot has that figured out. So take some notes. I know you guys are taking notes from Whatnot. Take notes from that one. Okay. On to the fun stuff. We are going to do designer pronunciation. I have three new designer brands. I'm familiar with these and totally do not pronounce them how they're supposed to be pronounced, but we're going to go through this. First one is Anna Sui. <laughs> I say it and pronounce it how it looks like it's spelled, but the proper pronunciation is Anna Sui, which actually sounds really nice, kind of rolls off your tongue. Anna Sui. I like that. A uh, second one that we're going to go through, and I know probably most of you guys say this the right way, but it's Herms. Every time I see it, it's Herms. That's how I say it in my head. I've never seen Herms in real life, but the real or proper pronunciation is Hermes. So you, the, the H is silent. It's Hermes. Can I roll the tongue? Can I roll the Hermes? <laughs> <laughs> These are just too much fun to read over. I I like that one, Hermes. I need to I need to start saying that one right. And then the last one, which is a brand that I have known since high school. So Jean Paul Gaultier. That's how I say it. If you're old enough in the '90s, you would probably remember the perfume. They were the blue jeans, the white jeans, and then there was a red. I think there was like three different bottles. I loved those scents, and I think it would be probably late '90s, early 2000s. Sorry. So. Proper pronunciation is Zon Paul Gautier. Zon Paul Gautier. Oh, I'm not French. I'm sure there's a better way to pronounce it, but that's how they said on this post. Zon Paul Gautier. I like that. I'll still say Jean Paul Gautier, but whatever. It is what it is. Three designer brands that we just learned how to pronounce properly. Way too much fun. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these topics. If there are some designer names that you want me to cover or go over proper pronunciation, drop them down below. Also, would love to hear your thoughts on the Poshmark updates, anything happening. You guys know, magic happens down in the comments. Okay, I'm going to head out of here. It's been a good video. I like this stuff. Lots of good topics. And uh, if this has brought you value in your reselling business, make sure to give me a thumbs up and tap subscribe on your way out. I am wishing you guys all many sales. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.